Hi guys! I'm here to show you the process that I used to complete this painting of my husband in the mountains. At the end of the video I will list all of the colors that I used so be sure to hang on for that. So the first thing I did was just a light pencil sketch of my composition. Then I wet the entire painting with clean water, avoiding the areas that I want to leave as pure white highlights, but just wetting everywhere else. And once everything was good and wet, I started washing in color. The sunset's coming from the left side, so I'm spreading the warm pink colors on the left and then blending into cooler blues and purples toward the right. Just using lots of water, lots of color, and I'm not worried about creating any shapes right now. I'm just trying to set that sunset mood. Well, I paused the video for that layer to dry, and you can see it's quite a bit lighter than it looked when it was wet which is normal for watercolor. There was a lot of water mixed into those paint colors there. And now I've painted with clear water again, this time avoiding more areas on the tree trunks in the figure where I would like for them to be lighter than the sky and mountains. Just adding to the glow of the sunset with my pinks and blues. These areas that I'm missing on the trunks will be not as bright as the whites, of course, but they will be quite light by the time we've added all of our darks. And will help show the light shining on them. Now once that layer dried, I painted in the more distant mountain with warmer pur purples to the left and cooler ones to the right, blending some of the color into the shadowy area of the figure because I want that area to be less defined. Now let that mountain dry and did the same thing with the closer mountain. This time I used darker values and I also dropped in dabs of red paint here and there to add more texture and variation, perhaps suggesting that there are trees on the mountain. And it makes it pretty. It's one of the best things about watercolors, the way you can let it create happy surprises, just let it blend all together. And then without letting that mountain dry, I just moved right into adding some more color to the foreground area. I don't mind if that layer mingles a little bit with the mountain layer. In fact, I think it looks nice when it does. After pausing for the paper to dry everywhere, it was time to start working on the tree trunks. As you can see, I'm switching between two brushes here, using one to paint the brownish colors on the shadowy side of the tree trunks, and then using the second brush to soften some of the edges with clean water, and to drop in dabs of red paint here and there. I'm also blending soft edges into the ground areas. I'm doing the same thing with the figure. I need to use a pencil to bring back some of the lines that I all but washed away in previous layers and then just doing the same actions as I did on the tree trunks on, um, to the figure. Adding darker values to the shadowy parts of John's body and backpack and blending them into the ground area. You just really want to lose those edges where he meets the ground. I let everything dry again, then repeated the process that I used in the last step, but this time using even darker values and moving them farther to the right sides of the objects, where they will be in deeper shade. I'm not really worrying too much about the pencil lines I used to draw the trees, I'm just using them as a guide. I'm also keeping in mind the direction of the light in relation to the trees, so I know where the shadows should be the darkest. just drawing with my paintbrush, softening some areas with water. This layer really causes the foreground to come forward puts in some good dark darks on the sides of the trees that are furthest from the light. And drawing on the ground with my brush, just creating shadows and shapes on the ground, and blending them into the tree trunks and into John's backside. In some parts I wiped out areas with a paper towel or lifted color with an almost dry brush where I wanted it to be lighter. 
just kind of making decisions as I go there, thinking about the shadows on the trees and then also creating interest and perhaps shadows of things we can't see. Then I added even more texture to the ground by splattering paint onto it with a toothbrush. I used a scrap piece of paper to protect the rest of the painting. I add a couple of birds. I love birds. And then you see me using a fritz scrubber on the tree trunks. In some spots I'm lifting areas to make them lighter and in some areas I'm just softening the edges of white highlights. After each scrub I blot with a clean paper towel. Add a little more work to the ground area, sign my name, and done! Thanks for watching! I hope you enjoyed seeing my process. The list of colors is coming in a sec. I'll be doing more videos in the future and I'd love to hear your input if there's something you'd like to see me do. Please hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss anything. You can also find me on my website, Facebook, or Instagram. Until next time!